Good morning, world. I am Judy, your web-based therapist, making therapy accessible and convenient for our clients in Florida and New York, and of course, sharing information worldwide. Today, I want to talk about five tips for managing your mental health in the workplace. Um, and we know that lately, the work and home boundaries have been kind of blurring quite a bit, and especially it's been happening quite a bit to begin with, but we know that with recent events, it has happened quite a bit more. So today we want to talk about five ways, five tips for managing your mental health in the workplace. But before I get into that, I want to take a quick moment and say, if you are subscribed, thank you so very much for being a part of this wonderful world of ours. And if you're not yet subscribed, please take a moment and click the subscribe button below so that you can join our wonderful world of awesomeness. And remember to tick the bell so that you are notified when I post new videos so that you don't miss anything. And of course, if you'd like to purchase one or three of my books, there's also a link below that will take you to a site that shows you all your different options of places where you can get one or three of my books. Okay, so let me get back to it. The first thing we need to start to make sure that we're doing is keep a separation, keep a separation between work and personal. Um, it's gotten to the point where it's almost like one big pile of day and the, we go from work to home and they, they seem to intertwine quite a bit, especially for, pe for people who are working from home still. Um, one thing that we need to do is make sure that you are setting those boundaries, such as things, doing things such as having an actual work schedule, meaning that maybe you're, if you, if you work from nine to five, from eight to five, from Hey, even if you're working 16 hour days, whatever the work schedule is, make sure that you're having a work schedule and that you're making sure that you're doing work during the work hours. As in, you, you're not answering emails, you're not um, re responding to texts, because I know that's right now that's one of the things that people do is because we have access to text messages, even on your day off, um, people from work are texting you, asking you questions. Um, asking you to do things and sending you emails. And of course, having emails, work emails on your personal phone. Seriously, it's called a personal phone, not a work phone. Doing, setting those, those boundaries can help us manage the stress of work or keeping the stress of work at work so that when you're at home, you're able to relax, you're able to focus on your family, you're able to do those things that you know, focus on you, enjoy you, enjoy your personal time, enjoy the time that is set aside for you. But in order to do that, you have to be able to set those clear boundaries. If you work from nine to six, there's no reason that you're um, responding to emails at 9 p.m. after you've gone to work, after you've gone home. If you're, if you have two or three days off, or even if you have just a half a day off, you should not be responding to emails. You should not be answer, having to answer text messages during your time off because that's blurring that um, boundary between work and between work and home. And when you start doing that, not only are you taking away from your personal needs and your, your family and all other things, you're keeping the stress of the workday with you as you're going through, you know, what should be your personal life. Two, focus on excelling, not proving anything to anyone or competing. A lot of times in the workplace, uh, especially um, um, with minorities, such as um, w whether it's women or people of color, black people or whatever, whatever makes us different in the workplace, sometimes get, makes us feel like we need to do more. We have to uh, do. Um, I know black people, we, all, we often hear and have the saying of we have to be twice as good to get half the credit. Yes, that is in a, in a lot of in a lot of situations. That is true. But it's important that we're not so focused on trying to prove to people that we belong there, trying to prove to people that we have um, that that we weren't a token hire or trying to prove whatever it is that people want to prove to somebody and that at the expense of your personal self, of your personal well-being, because in, when you're working 16 hour days instead of the eight hours, everyone else is working to prove that, you know, you're a cut above the rest, you're this, you're that you're taking away from the time that you can be investing in self-care, the time that you could be investing in personal growth, the time that you should be resting, the time you could be investing in other things that matter to you even more than this job. So make sure that you are taking the time and focusing on excelling, being the best in, um, you that you can be, being the best, whatever your job is, whatever your position is, being the best dad, but 
focus on being the best you at that job as opposed to proving to everyone else something. Um, and half the time, people are not really looking. But yes, I know that sometimes people are making those judgments. But you know what? Who cares? That's their baggage. That's their issue. Focus on being the best you and just leave it there because the best you is definitely more than enough to be. And because half the time we're, put, we're putting in so much more than everyone else anyway, just by being your best, you're, you're already a cut above the rest. So just focus on being you. Three, mind your business. When you're at work, you're at work. Focus on work. Do the work that you're paid to do. Do the work that, do the work that you came to do. But focus on being at work. There are so many little clicks and issues and things and um, stuff, personal things that happen at work. Where when you start getting involved in the, um, in the drama of work, it adds to the stress that you're dealing with because you're, de you're having to deal with this person's drama, that person's drama, this person. No. If you go to work and you can focus on, hey, I'm at work. Yes, you can have some friendly relationship with your peers. You can ha definitely have friendly relationships with your coworkers. And, you know, maybe once in a while you're having conversations and some of them you, you may even be friendly with. But mind your business. Stay with, if you came to work, focus on work. Don't be getting involved in all the drama because once you start getting involved in the drama of work, the drama of work also starts getting involved in the drama of your life. Because once you open that door to, hey, I'm part of drama, now your life, your personal business also becomes, you know, fair game. So, but if you're not in it, you're not sh sharing, you're not discussing, you're not having, you're not engaging in the drama, then yeah, you get to be a little bit more out of it. And if, even if they did decide to talk about you, guess what? You're not there, so you can't hear it. So you don't really care. Mind your business. Just focus on what you came to do. Focus on doing what you came to do at work and, you know, be at work when you're at work. Four, make use of resources. A lot of times work can be very stressful, but there are resources that are available to help us manage the, st the stress of work. Things like your employee assistance program, which I am a big proponent of, Employee assistance programs because it's one of the most underutilized um, services or resources available to people, and we just they, people just don't use it. It gives you access to mental health services that that are at no cost. And I always tell people, hey, whether you pay whether you use it or not, the company still pays for it. So why not use it? Things like your your PTO. Many people are so busy trying to prove something to somebody that they will work and not take their time off, that they will, or sometimes it's not you, sometimes the job people, other people um, start becoming so dependent and so reliant on you and they make it difficult for you to take your time off. No, these are services, these are benefits that you have earned as an employee of that organization. Use them because they are there to help you manage and to help you keep up and you know strengthen your own personal growth, your mental health, all it, our body needs that time to rest. So you need to take your time off. Hey, the, PT, the EAP is there to help you manage the stress of life and work. So use that instead of just, uh, you know, soldiering through it. Make sure that you're using the resources available. Five, have a personal identity outside of work. You cannot be work. You are not work. You can't have your whole identity, all of who you are, be based on work or your job. Have a life outside. I always preach life-affirming activities. We need to have those things that make us excited about life, that gives us the joy, that help us see the joy and remember the joy of life. Because if, or if your whole identity is based or is centered around work, what happens if work is no longer there? Because when your whole identity is based on work, then you have a different level, an extra level of stress because you have to make sure that you keep this work going. You have to go out of your way and do all sorts of extra to maintain this work because that's who you are. You have no identity outside of work. But if you start having a life, a personal identity that is not related to work, that is not related to this job, that is not related to working for the XYZ company, then you're in a position to be you, enjoy being you, and 
have not have the weight of that job being on your on your shoulders not have the not be having to be tied to this job not feeling the stress of having to you know be this job 24/7 so have a personal life a personal identity that is outside of work okay so let's do a quick recap first keep your personal and your work life separate you need to have a separation because you cannot just have a 24 hours of continuous work stress because when you go home, this is your time to rest, not, not your time to stress about whatever is going on or what happened at work. Two, focus on excelling and not competing or proving anything to anyone. You're there to be, to be your best you that you can be and just do that. That is more than enough. That is probably a lot more than a lot of other people are doing. Just you're good enough. You're be- you are you're enough. So just focus on being in, of be, just focus on being you. Three, mind your business. Don't get involved in the drama of work. Don't get involved in all the stuff that's happening because once you start getting involved, you're dealing with the stress and you also open yourself to becoming part of the drama of work. Four, make use of resources such as EAP and PTO because those are there to help you manage and help you um, manage the stress and help you keep up with what is going on. Keep up with you. Keep up with your personal life, help you get the rest and the, you know, help keep you healthy. So if you're not using them, how are you staying healthy when you're failing to use the resources there to help you stay healthy? Finally, have a personal life, a personal identity outside of work because work can't be all that you are because it adds too much stress to just for you to just be all about work. So make sure you have a personal identity, you know, engaging in those life affirming activities and all that good stuff. Um, Yeah, that's it. As always, if you or someone you know happens to be going through something that's more than you can handle, please remember that there are professionals like myself who are available, able, and willing to help and are even providing remote services who can assist with whatever you may have going on. So please figure out who those people are in your community so that if you need them, you can reach out and get the help that you need. And that is all we have for today. Good morning, world. Have an awesome day.